Yes. Okay, first is O. To start with, since my my East team apparently said that I apparently say first things first way too often. If in Moodle you go to and we are having internet issues today. That's like really bright. Is it, can you even see the yeah. No. That's what it Somewhere in here it says rubric. When Where? you click on it, you get to this page, and if you click this link, you get to this. There are basically two places that you get a chance to tell us about your project, okay? Some people are telling us about their project in the NGSS. That's not really the place to do it. In the NGSS, you're telling us that you understand the NGSS. And while it's fine to use examples in there, what you really need to be doing there is explaining what the NGSS tells you to do. Should phones be on the table at all? What's the rule on that? Not visible. So, two places where you should tell us about your project. One is the project planning sheet slash contract. And in that place, you're going to tell us, hey, this is the project we're going to do. And the reason you're doing that, and you describe it, the reason you're doing that is twofold. One, because you're planning your project out and you're writing that stuff down. Two, you're writing it down and telling us about it so we can say, oh, yes, if you did that, that project, you're going in the right direction. If you were to say, I'm going to show Newton's third law of motion by dissecting a chicken embryo, then we would say, well, wait a minute, those things don't really have anything to do with each other. Or if they do, you need to give me a lot more explanation because I'm not seeing that, okay? Or if you were to say, I'm going to show Newton's third law of motion by saying that when one object hits another object, that object rolls away. Then I'll say, you haven't understood the third law of motion. That, that's closer than the chicken egg, egg thing, chicken embryo. However, it's not close enough. So this gives us a time to feedback and say, we need to talk more about this. Remember, the only goal, the only reason you get grades is to see whether or not you understood the stuff we are charged with teaching you. In other schools, when you get a bad grade, then you just never learn it. Here we go, well, we need to reteach that. So this is the other place. Do you want to tell that part? This is the project rubric that you are making which we will use to grade your final project, okay? You create the, rock, the rubric for grading your final project of unit two. We have to agree with it. Yes, we will have to agree with it. But in this one, this is your place to tell us, sort of, okay, the first NGSS thing is about electric and magnetic forces, which is really one force called electromagnetism. And you're going to say, hey, this is sort of what electricity is, and this is what magnetism is. And in my project, the, you, so you sort of say, this is what these things are. So we're going, OK, you're understanding it. And then you say, and this is my project. And this is how my project is going to demonstrate that I understand what these two things are. You have to tell us three things specifically that will be in your project that shows that you understand electrical, gravitational, and magnetic forces. Oh, and I miss gravitational, sorry. That is a different force, by the way. Right, that one's different. So make certain you need to give us a brief summary of what your project is, and then a three-point checklist. Here's in my project how I'm showing you electricity, magnetism, and gravity forces. So you have to, to tell us, this is your chance again to tell us about your project and how your project will meet the criteria. And if we agree, yes, 
But when, by the time we give you a satisfactory on this and we say, yes, that thing that you just said you're going to do, that would in fact demonstrate that you understand the project. And we go, yes, that's good. As long as you do the things that you say you're going to do in this, you're going to pass. And that's it. That's the place. OK, it's this court's going to tell you about the if, other two. If you tell me you're going to define certain vocabulary words in your rubric, then your project needs to define those vocabulary words, or you lose points. But so whatever problem. your rubric tells us you're going to do in your project, your project can darn well better do it, or you're going to lose points. The bottom part of this rubric you've seen before. Present arguments. Conduct investigations. This is that scientific methodology. So look at what you did in Unit 1, which should be satisfactory or outstanding. So look at your project rubric for Unit 1. And instead of giving us this, this long summary for some people that went for like over a page, some people gave me one sentence that didn't really make any sense, I want a checklist. Tell me what three things you will do in your project that means you can present arguments using evidence. I want three things. I want a checklist so that I can see what your project's going to do. That means that you can conduct an investigation and ask questions. And you should already have that, at least a beginning of it, from Unit 1 project rubric. Again, in science, one thing builds on the other. And if you pull up the rubric, stop that word. Okay. This, I cannot, I'm having issues with my Google Drive, so I can't get some things to post in a Moodle, but it will be there before the end of the day, I hope. Here is how we teachers will grade your assignment called Project Planning Sheet and Contract. So we are, we will all be uniform. It doesn't matter which of the three of us you have. It's all going to get graded the same way. The purple is for the outstanding highest level A quality work. Those top boxes where it says team members and due date, you should have that right. In the document itself, we gave you an example. In the box that says goals, okay, you need to give us a statement of what you learned what your project is that you're learning about. You need to tell us enough detail about your project. And again, this does not have to be a book. Give us like two or three summary sentences of what your project's going to be doing. And I'll give you an example. If this had been in the gold box for unit one, this student would have had an outstanding. In order to learn Newton's three laws, we will do one demonstration for all three laws. So they told me right there in two sentences what their project was teaching them and how many demonstrations I was going to be seeing in their project. Then you give me a summary of your project. It will be a skateboard with a tennis ball right on top. The skateboard will crash into a rock, sending the tennis ball sliding forward. We will then explain in Google Slides. So now they've told me how they're going to be presenting their project. It's going to be in Google Slides. We'll explain in Google Slides how this activity shows all three laws. That type of information being in the goals box gives you the highest grade. In the task boxes, we get all kinds of confusing things on that. You look at your summary of your project. What work do you alone or you and your partner have to do to accomplish what you told me in the summary your project is. Somebody has to gather materials. Somebody's have to go be in front of the video camera. Somebody has to be behind the video camera. Somebody's going to have to upload it. Somebody's going to have to explain the first and third law or however you divided the work. Set yourself due dates. These are not due dates for us. These are due dates so you can calibrate and keep on track of getting your project done on time. The purpose of getting a summary is so that you clearly understand with your partner what your project is supposed to do. The purpose of these task boxes is so that you and your partner clearly understand what work is required for you to do the project that's in your summary. 
We've had some questions, so let me make it very clear. You sink or swim as a team. You picked your partners. You picked your team. We did it. We don't assign them. You pick them. So if your partner does a real crappy job with electricity, and that is what you turn in, your grade suffers the same as theirs. So you need to look at each other's work and make certain that it is a high quality because your grade will be a super swim together. So let's say your partner is in charge of electricity and they do really bad at it. Then you need to help them or you need to have them redo it or you need to do it yourself and let us know that they did nothing. But if you turn in your work and their work is crappy, you get one grade. And their crappy work affects your grade. So sink or swim as a team. It's your team's job to check the work as you go through. And then slow down. Meeting expectations, this is the bare minimum. You must complete what's in the blue box before we will treat this assignment as being done and you can move on and turn in your project. There's four pieces of information that has to be in the gold box. If you're missing one of them, we will let you still live. Maybe. If you're missing the summary of the project, you will not live. You will have to redo it. If you are in the yellow or the red for the work that you've done, you will redo it. The blue is the bare minimum that your project planning sheet has to have before you can turn in your project. And these will be put into Moodle as soon as um, Google Drive, the tech issues are fixed. Anything before we see them on the way and you won't see them again? Uh, oh, well, <laughs> you have a chance. I mean, uh, just as you are getting ready to have a week out of school to go be on your own and do things that you want to do. Uh, springtime is notorious for making mammals, you're a mammal, do irrational and odd things. Uh, old timers I know used to say the saps. So uh, don't make any stupid decisions. 